Hey guys, what's up? I hope your week is going well. I just filmed a Q&A for you guys about hand eczema, so stay tuned for that if it hasn't already gone up. I'm not sure the order of appearance of these videos, but I'm filming them back to back. So as you can tell from the title and thumbnail, you guys have wanted me to share my thoughts on shea butter, on the use of just raw shea butter as a moisturizer. I get, I get many questions about that. So in today's video, I'm gonna cover that. I'm gonna show you guys some different shea butter based moisturizers and kind of, you know, how they are useful and what they, what they are helpful for. So shea butter is a natural fat extracted from the kernel of the African shea tree, which is native to Sub-Saharan and Eastern Africa. It is specifically the Vitellaria paradoxa tree. I hope I'm saying that right. And shea butter contains fats and many fatty acids primarily palmitic acid and linoleic acid and stearic acid. These are essential fatty acids. And it also has many what are called phytosterols, which are plant antioxidants that can be anti-inflammatory and can be helpful for redness, irritation, and, and also can be helpful for theoretically scavenging free radicals depending on depending on their stability. It's also rich in another soothing and anti-inflammatory family of compounds called triterphenes. And the anti-inflammatory properties of shea butter that people appreciate when they use it in moisturizing vehicles is probably related to the rich breadth of phenolic compounds that it contains. It is an effective lipid emollient by virtue of the fatty acids. And not only is it helpful for dry skin as a moisturizer, it uh, can also be helpful in shampoos and conditioners targeted towards individuals who suffer from dry and brittle hair. It is not only a rich emollient, but it is solid at room temperature and therefore makes a nice occlusive moisturizer as well. And by that I mean, not only does it soften the edges of your skin cells through its emollient properties, but its occlusive properties help to seal in transepidermal water loss on the skin barrier and help to keep the skin hydrated and stay hydrated. Um, so I mentioned the rich breadth of phenolic compounds that are likely playing key roles in the anti-inflammatory and soothing effects appreciated through the use of shea butter and shea butter based moisturizers. Shea butter based moisturizers have been used uh, by populations in Africa for centuries. So it has a long-standing use in traditional medicine and continues to make an appearance in many drugstore moisturizers, as well as prescription moisturizers for specific skin conditions that I will mention here in a little bit. Um, but uh, we also know that along with those, in that rich milieu of phenolic compounds, Shea butter also contains something called catechans, which are a type of plant-derived antioxidant that is found in green tea. And come to find out, shea butter also has catechans just like green tea. I've talked about green tea and its uh, use in skincare and what it's been shown to be helpful for. And so it's not surprising that some of those same properties, redness improvement, inflammation improvement, uh, skin barrier impair, uh, repair of the skin barrier are also seen with the use of shea butter, potentially because of the presence of catechans, like epigallo catechan gallate, for example, which is a potent antioxidant found at very high concentrations in green tea, matcha green tea, but also can be found in shea butter. Not the same, not as, not as, not as not to as high a level as in green tea, but it is, it is still there. And it turns out that the, that the um, catechan constituents of shea butter will vary quite a bit from uh, region to region as far as where the shea butter was harvested. There can be some variability. Now, I don't know what part of the world makes the best shea butter <laughs> um, or which shea butter from which tree has the magic milieu, I simply know that there are differences from areas, 
from different areas, different, different geographies from where the shea butter is coming. And shea butter is also rich in vitamin C, which is an antioxidant, typically very limited, however, in its ability to scavenge free radicals. When applied topically to the skin, it's not very stable. But shea butter is rich in vitamin C. So I mentioned already that it has a long-standing use as a moisturizer, as a hair moisture, moisturizing ingredient, uh, but it's also, you know, those properties have also been capitalized upon in the use of prescription uh, moisturizers. Prescription moisturizers, as a side note, like a moisturizer that you get with a doctor's prescription, they've actually done studies that those prescription moisturizers are no better necessarily than, say, a shea butter based moisturizer that you could get in the drugstore. So, always know that sometimes in dermatology, many times in dermatology, things that you get in the dermatologist's office with a prescription are not always necessarily better than what is available over the counter. Sometimes it's just an alternative. Um, but one, one prescription moisturizer that uh, contains shea butter is something used in eczema called Atopiclair. It's a prescription moisturizer for people with eczema. It has shea butter, it has, uh, I believe, glyceridic acid, which is derived from licorice root, again, anti-inflammatory, and it's been shown to, to be helpful in repairing skin barrier of people with eczema. Uh, but no better than other shea, shea butter based moisturizers that you find in the drugstore. But it's nice that we have some actual clinical studies on this particular shea butter containing moisturizer. So that is a merit to having the prescription one, I suppose. We we'll also have a prescription moisturizer for seborrheic dermatitis. I have uh, Q&As on seborrheic dermatitis, by the way. But Promiseb, P-R-O-M-I-S-E-B, is a prescription moisturizer for individuals with, with seborrheic dermatitis that contains shea butter. So I'm telling you this because it appears that shea butter is useful in those conditions in ameliorating some of the dryness, redness, inflammation, and is well tolerated. So if you suffer from those, don't be surprised that your shea butter based moisturizers may be helpful to you. All right, so that's that's what it does. You know, that's what we know about it and we use it all the time. And that's pretty much all I can say about shea butter itself. But you will find in the drugstore variants of shea butter. You will find raw shea butter. You can get it on iHerb um, Now Solutions. It's just pure shea butter, solid at room temperature, and will when you warm it up in your hands, it will it will kind of liquefy and just blend into the skin. You get raw shea butter, shea butter that's been whipped. Then you will also find shea butter that is included, that along with the shea butter, there are other active ingredients to combine to make a formulation of a moisturizer. You'll see this, for example, in CeraVe's Skin Renewing Night Cream, which you guys know I'm a huge fan of. CeraVe's Skin Renewing Night Cream has shea butter, but it also incorporates some humectants like hyaluronic acid as well as peptides. These ingredients hold on to water in the skin. Shea butter by itself doesn't really do that. It softens skin edges, it seals the skin barrier, but it doesn't really have any water holding ability on its own. So manufacturers take the shea butter and capitalize on its anti-inflammatory properties, occlusive properties, emolliency, and blend it in with some other active moisturizing ingredients like, like humectants, hyaluronic acid, and like ceramides. Ceramides are, are what is added to, to CeraVe. Oh, that's the other thing I forgot to mention about shea butter. Shea butter has what are called phytoceramides, which are plant-derived ceramides. They look similar to, to those made by mammals, uh, and they are an area of active investigation in terms of their utility in topical moisturizers, and you'll find them in many, you know, the earth science, the ceramedics, uh, cruelty-free uh, moisturizer that I, I love and recommend to you guys, it's got, it's got plant-derived ceramides in it. So shea butter has, has its, own, its own ceramides uh, plant-derived. Not quite the same, um, but anyways, <laughs> that, 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 those musings aside, CeraVe you know, capitalizes on, on shea butter in this moisturizer, as well as their, I believe their Skin Renewing Night Serum as well, it has retinol in it. Uh, so it's well tolerated and it makes, it makes, 
you know, it's something manufacturers probably like a lot. It's solid at room temperature, has very low, no water content to it. So, uh, you know, it doesn't have, you, know, you don't have to worry about contamination. Uh, so it's good in that sense. All right, but let me show you guys a little bit here because you all ask me a fair amount, like what do I think about just putting raw shea butter as a moisturizer, whether it be on the face or the body. Um, first, first point I will make is I do not think, nor could I predict this, that doing, doing such a thing as putting raw shea butter as a moisturizer on your face or body is something that is going to trigger acne or cause acne or be bad for acne or be bad for people with clog, you know, who are concerned with the appearance of their pores. I really can't predict that. You know, it's in, it's in prescription moisturizers and that's not seen as a side effect with them. People seem to tolerate it well, but when, when you put some, some, for some people using heavy moisturizers, no matter whether it be shea butter or dimethicone um, containing oint, you know, ointments, emollients, using those for whatever reason, if they're too heavy, can, can trigger their acne, it can be irritating to their skin. And that's very individualized. Same holds true with rosacea. If you have rosacea and you're wondering, is this a good moisturizer for, for rosacea? Some subtypes of rosacea, you put a heavy moisturizer on and for whatever reason, that, occlu the, that occlusivity, the skin barrier just can't tolerate. And that's why some more lighter weight lotions that have more of a water content to them and more hydrators rather than occlusives can be helpful. But just plain raw shea butter like this now one that's not whipped or anything, um, you can definitely use it as a face moisturizer or a body moisturizer. I personally enjoy using it to dry patches on the elbows, the knees, the ankles, and the heels, my heels, cal you know, dry cracked heels. I also like using this uh, around areas that are going to be prone to a lot of friction when I go on a long run. I find it makes a nice, lightweight uh, ointment to just kind of kind of uh, help with lubrication in those areas and prevent little friction blisters from occurring. But I'll just come up to the viewfinder and show you guys. Um, the issue with the raw shea butter that you will find, it's not, it's not a problem, it's just that it's, it's a little hard to work with, just a little bit. Um, and you know, comment below if you if you use raw shea butter and you've got another one that's a little different. But this has just been my experience and what I will point out to you. It can be a little hard to work with. Let's come here so you guys can see. See how it doesn't, it doesn't have that spreadability. See how it, how it kind of clumps? That can be hard to work with. Not impossible, but it can be really hard to get this on your skin in an even in an even layer. Um, but you can work with it. You start warming it up in your hands, for example, and you can get it on there in a nice layer. And I've got to say, if you have dry, brittle nails uh, and, uh, you know, you're trying to, to cut back on some of those manicures, like I've suggested in other videos, uh, Consider this, it's nice, you take the time to just rub it in, which is very therapeutic to give yourself a massage, and it nicely gives a nice emolliency to the nail plate, to the cuticles, and can really just help them to be more luminous and really look nice. So I, I, I like it on the hands, I think that's, that's where it's easiest to use. You put it on your face, it's really hard to, to rub this onto the face. You could massage it into your scalp if you have a dry scalp. Um, and if you're somebody with a hair texture that is dry, brittle, um, you might find that using shea butter like in your scalp and massaging it in can also help can also help your hair proximally where it's closest to to the scalp. So that's a good that's a way to use it. It's just a little difficult to work with because it is because it's not it's not been oops. <laughs> Yeah, it's very emollient. <laughs> I just dropped it. Um, so uh, it's, it's good. It's just a little hard to work with as is. 
Um, so this is the Now Solution Shea Butter, 100%. I guess on iHerb, it's pretty inexpensive. I know many of you like, you know, the idea of doing things kind of more natural, and this is a fine, this is more than fine to do. Um, just, a, just a little challenging to work with. Kind of a next step up from that, as far as getting a little bit uh, of manipulation of the shea, but not really much. De La Cruz, um, you guys know I'm a fan of De, De La Cruz. They, their, sulfur, their sulfur mask I love. They also have a shea butter that I really enjoy. It too is a little hard to work with, but unlike, unlike just the raw shea, they have whipped theirs. So they whip in basically air, I would imagine, and that makes it a lot easier. I'm gonna turn into a grease bag here, but it's okay. It's a lot easier. See how, see how the consistency is not as grainy? Do an elbow here. It's still, it's still a little tacky, still a little hard to spread, but it, you can see how it goes on much more evenly, easier to get in, into the skin. Um, this is super occlusive, by the way. I mean, super occlusive. You put this on your face, and uh, that's fine to do. But if you're one of those individuals that I mentioned with uh, rosacea that is that is prone to to flaring with super with super occlusive moisturizers, that that's probably not gonna. You're probably not gonna tolerate that well. Um, but in that case, you know, there are many moisturizers that have shea butter in them that are more lightweight, there are lotions that also add in other additives. So, uh, you know, I'm a fan obviously of the CeraVe Healing Ointment, You've, or, sorry, excuse me, CeraVe Skin Renewing Night Cream that has shea butter. This is empty, otherwise I'd show it to you guys, but I reviewed it for you all, so check out that video, but it is fantastic. And it it's easier to spread on the face, so if you, you know, if you're looking for a shea butter based moisturizer for the face that's easy to work with and not as not as occlusive as obviously the raw shea or the, the whipped, uh, consider that one. But uh, the raw shea, the whipped, the whipped in particular, just because it's e easier to work with, the De La Cruz one, I find that those, those are great on um, dry patches on the body. Uh, you know, they, they make a nice occlusive seal. So, uh, you know, around the ankles, the feet, the knees. If you are someone who, who has really dry elbows and knees, I think this is, this is helpful um, and I recommend it. If you're somebody who suffers from eczema, this is an option. Um, I really like it. It's pretty no, no, pretty no nonsense uh, as well. You know, it's just shea butter, minimal allergen profile that you could become allergic to. I don't think I've ever seen anybody who's become allergic, who's developed a sensitivity to shea butter. What it lacks is humectants. So it doesn't hold, it doesn't, it doesn't hold on to water in the skin. It prevents water from evaporating, but doesn't, 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 you know, soak it in and hold it in like you get from humectants. Humectants include things like peptides, hyaluronic acid, um, but this is just an occlusive and emollient, so you will lack that. So if your skin is, is really dull and dry and you want to plump it up, this isn't going to plump it up. It's not going to bring in that, that increased water content. It will keep water from evaporating out, but it won't necessarily do anything to increase water content in your in your epidermis uh, and when you when you do that when you when you use moisturizers that have humectants like peptides that increase the water content in your epidermis you get a nice um, effect of not only hydrating the skin but also of masking the appearance of wrinkles and fine lines as well as discoloration simply by scattering of light uh, through that increased water content in the epidermis um, so yeah, that would be, that would, those are my thoughts on shea butter. It is a fantastic ingredient on its own. It's something you can use, just a little difficult to work with. But comment below your experience using, uh, whether it be raw shea butter or a shea butter moisturizer, how you use it, if you find it difficult to, to work with. And I'll list these down below for you guys if you're interested. But I hope you like this video. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.
got to turn the camera off, but my hands are so greasy. <laughs> my hands are so greasy, I can't turn the camera off. <laughs>